This video will discuss the electromotive force, or EMF, in electrochemical reactions. So according to our cell diagrams, what we draw is the anode, where oxidation occurs on the left of the diagram, where electrons that get oxidized flow to, from the left to the right over to our cathode, where the reduction occurs. Those electrons are gained over here with our salt bridge double bar in the middle. So for our typical reaction we've been using thus far in this chapter, we have tin solid gets oxidized to tin 2 plus aqueous cations, and then we have the reduction of nickel 2 plus aqueous cations to nickel solid metal. We have our anode on the left, cathode on the right, where the electrons flowed from being oxidized off the tin to being reduced onto the tin cations. Um, if this reaction is going to be spontaneous, if we have the electrons flowing from left to right without any external input of energy, then the Gibbs energy of this reaction has to be less than zero. Okay, so electrons are going to prefer to flow from low potential to high potential. A typical charged particle will have a positive sign, so charged particles with positive signs are going to flow from high voltage to low voltage, but electrons have negative signs, so we do the reverse of that. Electrons flow from low voltage to high voltage because of their negative charge. If we have a spontaneous re reaction, then the electrons are going to flow from the left to the right on our diagram, and that's going to complete the reaction in the forward direction as we have drawn it. So we have some voltage or some electrochemical potential on the left side on our anode, where we flow from the initial state on the left to the final state on the right. So we flow to the cathode, from the anode to the cathode. So our final state is the cathode on the right, our initial state is the anode on the left, so the change in potential is final minus initial, or the right minus the left. Notice this is the opposite of the spatial arrangement uh, of what, the way we draw our diagrams. We have to remember that it's final minus initial for how the electrons flow. Okay, so this delta V, this change in potential as our electrons flow, this is going to let us get at what is called the electromotive force. So the electromotive force, E, or the EMF, it's going to be indicated by the, the quantity E throughout the rest of this chapter, that is the change in potential that the electrons experience when there is a current of approximately zero flowing through the cell. So it's basically just what is the static potential between the anode and the cathode. So, or we could say the limit as the current, the current being a flow of charge per unit time. So current would be coulombs per second or amps. Each electron has a charge of E coulombs on it. So electrons flowing generates a current. If there's almost no electrons flowing, then there's almost no current. So the limit of the change in potential that the electrons experience as a function of their current as that current goes to zero is the electromotive force, and that's true if the cell is reversible. So we can take a tiny amount of electrons, flow them this way, measure the EMF, take a tiny amount, flow them that way, measure it, make sure that it converges to the same value. All right, so what about the sign of the EMF versus the spontaneity of the reaction? So if we have a positive EMF, that means the electrons are flowing from a low potential to a high potential, and that's what they want to do. So a positive EMF means we have a spontaneous reaction. A negative EMF means the electrons flowed from a high potential to a low potential, which is the opposite of what they want to do. So negative EMF is a non-spontaneous reaction. The reaction is spontaneous in the reverse direction. And then if, if we have an EMF of zero, if we have a potential which is equal on both sides of our diagram, there's no energetic incentive for the electrons to flow, and thus our reaction is going to be at equilibrium. So the EMF is going to be the criterion that's going to determine the sign of the Gibbs energy of reaction, and it's going to determine the spontaneity of our electrochemical cell, telling us what direction the electrons are going to prefer to flow.